Hi, my name is Lior, and this is Don't Starve by Clay Entertainment. I've described Don't Starve in the past as a mix of Minecraft and Diablo, but to be fair, it's more like Minecraft meets a roguelike. At least in beta, you start out rather unceremoniously as Wilson, a gentleman scientist who has appeared in this strange new land. The object of Don't Starve is roughly to, well, not starve, or be poisoned by mushrooms, or killed by bees, or drown in the ocean, or... Well, there are a lot of ways to die. Each new game of Don't Starve has a random map and random resources, and once you die, that's it. Game over, man. Much like Minecraft, a great strategy for the first day is to fill your pockets with any old thing you can get your hands on. Eventually, you'll be able to craft very simple items. Listen for the bell ring that indicates a new discovery. These items are usually helpful, such as axes and mining picks. These early days are also a great time to do a little exploring and try and find unusual resources and a good place to make a first base. Up in the top right corner, you can see what Don't Starve uses as a clock. The yellow parts are daytime, the red are dusk and early evening, and the blue is the pitch black night. The length of a day will change as the seasons progress too, which means yes, eventually it will be winter. Also on that side of the screen are the yellow hunger meter, the orange sanity meter, and the red health meter. Worlds in Don't Starve are pretty big. There are a few unique ways to get around quickly, and running on a path will make you move faster. It is very, very important that you make an axe and cut down some trees before nightfall, because you'll need to speed your fire. Don't Starve has a simple but strong inventory system using just two mouse buttons, and often you can combine items to do a special action, or use an item in an unusual way. We'll see more of this later. Carrots and berries will likely be your easiest source of food on these early days. Berries will eventually grow back, but it takes some time and picked food can spoil, so it's good practice for now to not pick more than you'll eat in the next day or two. Here's a good example of the inventory system at work. I've made a trap which I'll place on the ground. Then I can bait the trap with a carrot and stand back. Oh, come on little bunny. I just want to talk to ya. Check the map again. Come on. There we go, it's dinner. Clicking on the trap will give me back the trap and a live rabbit in my inventory, but I will be short one bait carrot, so, you know, that seems like a pretty good trade. I'm going to try and grab another flint for a pick, and then make my way back to that earlier cluster of mines to make camp for the night. I'm ready to head back to camp now, and as you can see, I'm going to get there just on time. As you can see, most of the animals go away at dusk, including the rabbits and the bees, but I can still run around a bit and see things. Really, the key point is to be safe and secure by the time your clock gets to the dark blue area, which is pitch black night. Now, I'm going to head back here and make a campfire. Except, oh good, I have forgot that I needed to make a campfire and spent all my materials on making that pick. So much for my great planning. So now, let's go run around and try and find some grass really quickly before uh, Pitch Black Night hits. Come on, grass.
So here's a good example of Don't Starve's random world generator in action. I have stumbled across a graveyard and a pig house, which, as we'll see later, is indeed a house for pigs. And in his backyard appears to be a sinister circle of evil plants with an item. Okay. Oh, there's my grass. Hooray! All right, let's head back to camp. I think thanks to the magic of fast moving paths, we will get there just in time. All right, we're back. Now I can build my campfire. Campfires are of course useful for light and also to cook your food and you will get more nutritional value out of your food by cooking it. So I'm gonna kill that rabbit and then eat it. It is the natural order of things here with uh, Wilson, the gen gentleman scholar. Nom. So it's the depths of night shortly. You'll see it start to get very, very dark and the birds will finally go away. Uh, as long as I keep putting wood on my fire, we are going to be just fine. It's nice if you can make a camp near resources like this so I can stay busy overnight. Uh, eventually you can make a bedroll so you can sleep through the night. It's also a good time to cook all your food and uh, do all your crafting. Right now our crafting options are pretty limited, but we're going to change that for tomorrow night. Make sure to top up that fire. Your tools do degrade with use, so you'll have to keep making new ones over and over. It is day two. We have survived our first day and night. So the goals for today in this game day is to keep exploring. We need to find a gold nugget because that will open up a lot of crafting opportunities. And uh, let's see if we can identify a good place to make a more sturdy camp. So this is where we ran by last night by the pig house. And you will see for today there is a pig who belongs to the house. You can feed him by offering him food from your inventory. And in return, he will make exciting poop or manure, which is actually pretty essential for your crafting later on. Gross, but important. So uh, let's feed him a few more times here. Oh, first we're gonna pick up this item. The uh, the evil plants around it. I won't give away what they do, but they are indeed evil. I'm actually not even sure what that item we just picked up does, which is part of the charm of Don't Starve. Uh, but you'll randomly encounter things, and who knows how it will come in handy in the future. And I think the pig is pretty much done with us. Alright, forget a pig. We're keeping those berries. So half the day is uh, about done now, and all we've managed to do is feed a pig, so <laughs> let's keep going. As you can see, the map is really thorough. It shows the pig house, it shows gravestones, and even mines that we have not yet dug up. So the map is definitely your friend. Hey, I know what that brown thing is. This is a wormhole. And if you ill-advisedly jump into it, as I'm doing right now, you'll be transported to another connected wormhole somewhere else in the world. And uh, obviously, we had to jump and see what was on the other side. 
So yeah, we are in the middle of nowhere. Let's take a look and see what the middle of nowhere has for us. And that is a... Okay, I do not know what that is. Uh-huh. And of course, there's always time to loot stuff. And that is an accordion monster? Hmm. I see that guy up there, kind of weird clockwork guy. Let's, uh, let's go see if he's friendly. I have actually, in my 12 or 13 playthroughs of this game, have never seen these guys before. Um, oh shit, he is definitely not friendly. Run, run, run back to the wormhole. Run, run, run. We are so not prepared to fight whatever that was. Clockwork, light, head, fire shooting thing. Whew. All right, back to where we came from. And yeah, as I was saying, in about a dozen games, I've actually never run into those guys before, so that was kind of a treat. Also of interest in all my previous worlds, rocks and mines have been extremely hard to come by. Uh, and in this world, there seem to be mines everywhere and rocks just lying all over the damn ground. Which just goes to show there really is a lot of variety in the randomly generated worlds. You're a turkey. Oh, there it goes. Turkeys will steal your berries, uh, but if you can catch them, they make for pretty delicious eating. So the day is almost done, and you'll notice I have been really, really bad about gathering food. I'm going to be a little sad later. Uh, tonight we are going to make a fire pit. It is a more permanent source of fire that doesn't need rebuilding every night. Uh, we should also make a backpack shortly, because I'm running out of inventory space. The nice thing about fire pits is they do take a little more material to make, but in the following nights you can just drop a little wood on them. You don't need to remake them over and over again like the campfire. Oh, inventory. So first up, I've noticed I have very little wood. I'm going to need wood both to keep the fire burning all night, of course, uh, and also to make our science machine, which is very, very important. So delicious berries. So let's chop down some trees here. As you can probably tell, this is where the Minecraft element comes in. game is about exploring, so, you know, do take a look and see what different things your inventory c items can do. Um, if you drop one on the other or one on a something in the environment, you'll see an example shortly. I'm going to plant some trees using the pine cones that I've been picking up. Fire first. All right, let's plant some trees. And that's just right mouse button with the pine cones. Planting trees around your base is a good idea because then you will always have firewood. Even if you are bad at preparing ahead of time, something like me. And now we're going to build our science machine. Hooray! This opens up a huge, vast amount of crafting. In fact, the majority of the crafting in the game is behind this science machine. So you can create shovels to dig graves or move plants. You can create weapons or armor out of uh, hay and wood. You can make walls and floors, fancy animal traps of different kinds, gardens, even a straw hat. So there is a lot of different things you can make. And this is sort of the, uh, the main impetus for setting up your little camp.
All right, let's check our map here, and uh, hopefully we can scroll around and find where that wormhole spit us out, just out of curiosity's sake. Ooh, so that was quite a ways away. So that gives you a little idea of uh, the size of the map. So once you get a science machine going, I think the game probably seems pretty straightforward. I mean, you're going to still find all kinds of weird things, and eventually I'd like to get some weapons and armor and go back through that wormhole and poke that clockwork lamp duck fire thing. Um, if there's a lot of gathering, a lot of crafting, meeting strange friends or foes, uh, and you have to remember just when you've got the hang of things, winter is coming. And winter is very hard to live through. Don't Starve is currently in beta. It's available for PC, Mac, and Linux. And you can buy two copies on Steam right now for about 12 bucks. It's super fun, and if you like survival craft games, I highly recommend it. So I'm Lior, and that's Don't Starve. Enjoy!